Well, hello, class. Um, sorry that the 7-2 video did not get posted last night. Um, I just did a little too much running around with my sick daughters, uh, getting them to the doctor and so on. Um, so, I uh, hope you enjoy this. Um, and I will not be here again today. I'm going to be home with them at least one more day. So, um, what you're going to work on today, um, please watch this video. Um, it's talking about solving multi-step equations. I'm only going to give you 13 classwork problems to work on today. Uh, please leave your books closed while you're watching the video. Uh, and as soon as the video is over, you can get your classwork done. There will be a 7-3 video that I'll make from home. Uh, and that will be up um, by about noon today. So um, your homework tonight is to watch 7-3. All right, let's get into solving multi-step equations. And this is really uh, the heart of this entire chapter. We're going to learn some more techniques as we go on. Uh, if you look ahead, you're going to notice that the next lesson is basically just the same exact as this lesson, same exact thing as this lesson with like fractions and decimals. So it's going to give you two lessons to really get multi-step equations down. 7-4 is a little bit of problem solving, changing word problems uh, into equations and then solving them. And then 7-5, we're going to deal with equations where the variables are on both sides. Okay, All of these really go down to the principle you're going to learn today. So really pay close attention. Um, as we talked about uh, in the previous video, <clears throat> from, from the very beginning, when I've been teaching you how to solve equations, we've talked from the very beginning that step zero, before you really even get started, there's this simplify step. Okay, This is really what we're focusing on um, in this chapter. Okay, that's right. All right, and so this is really uh, the focus of chapter seven. Um, and then after that, um, as you learned in the previous lesson, you start, um, we have to know what order to get rid of things. So we're going to write PEMDAS backwards. We're going to call it SAD MEP. Okay, subtraction addition, again, are grouped because they tied. Division and multiplication are grouped because they tie, uh, followed by exponents, followed by parentheses. Um, we're not going to worry about these last two right yet. Okay, so really what we're focusing on is get rid of subtraction and addition first, then focus on the division and multiplication, okay? And so an equation like 3x plus 7 uh, equals 10, um, <clears throat> the three, this, is, this would be multiplication, that's where we're going to get rid of that second, uh, whereas the plus 7 is the addition part, that's what we're going to get rid of first. Okay, let me make that a little thinner there. All right, so, and then what we've had all along, uh, we've had the idea of opposites, and balance. So these are nothing new. We've been we've been using these uh, the whole while we've been solving uh, the one-step equations. Okay. Um, all right. So what we're going to focus on um, is uh, last night or on seven one at least um, we talked about sad map and we did equations where we had two steps to solve. Okay. Today what we're going to do multi-step equations gets into doing some of the simplification before we get into sad map opposites and balance. All right. So. A couple different kinds of equations that you're going to run into uh, that have to be simplified first. Uh, the easiest one um, is one where you have um, more than one variable. So let's say we have something like 3x plus 7 um, plus 2x uh, is equal uh, to, uh, let's make it equal to 22. Okay? All right. Now, in order to solve this equation, what I'm going to do is I'm going to look for like terms. Uh, and like terms, to remind you, are things that have the exact same variable. So in this case, the 3x and the 2x are like terms. Uh, also, if we had lots of constants, uh, the constants could have been considered like terms, too. We only have one constant on this side, on the left side, which is the 7. Okay, so he doesn't get grouped with anything. So the first thing I'm going to do before I try to solve this equation is I'm just going to rewrite it. Well, 3x plus 2x gives you 5 x's. The plus 7 is an unlike term, so it gets left alone, equals 22. Okay, And so that would be the step 0 that I'm talking about where we simplify. Okay, And in this, template, in this case, we've been combining like terms. All right, now let's go ahead and solve this. This is good practice. This is what you should have been uh, practicing and mastering in 7-1. So to get rid of the plus 7, I'm going to subtract 7. That's the opposite. To keep balance, I have to do it on both sides. Do a little fruit ninja there. I get 5x is equal to 22 minus 7, which is 15. Okay, And now the last step is to get rid of the multiplication. So I get rid of multiply by 5 by dividing by 5. I do that with a fraction bar on both sides. So let's divide both sides by 5, and I get x equals 3. Okay, That is my solution. And if I go back and I check it, this is a little harder to check because I have to put the x in two different places. So 3 times, I'm going to actually write this one out. So 3 times 3, which is what I put in for x, that would give me 9, plus the 7, that didn't change, plus 2 times 3 is 6, 
And let's verify that equals 22. Well, 9 plus 7 is equal to 16, and 16 plus 6 does equal 22. So 22 equals 22. That's a good way to end your check so that you've verified it, so people don't even have to think. Okay. Um, and while I'm looking back through this, and that's, um, that's all right, so let's go back and let's just label the steps. All right. <clears throat> so right here, from here, oops, sorry. Okay, right here, this portion of the equation, we were doing step one, two, and three. We were using SADMEP to know what order to go in. We were doing opposites and balance to, in the first step, subtract seven from both sides, and then in the second step to divide both sides by five. Okay, so the actual solving is steps one, two, three, but you notice that before we got to the solving, we had to first use uh, the simplification step. And all the simplification step is going to do is to change the equation into what we saw in 7-1. Okay, um, another um, kind of question that you're going to see in this chapter uh, comes from this idea of combining like terms, and uh, it really comes from a word problem, okay? And it's a problem where you have consecutive integers. Okay, now consecutive um, is just a fancy way to say that they're numbers that come in order. So 7, 8, and 9 are consecutive integers. Okay? So suppose I have uh, three consecutive integers that add up to 96. All right, well, you're going to have to actually, here, we'll say sum of three consecutive integers is 96. So what you're going to have to do is first set up the equation, then combine like terms and solve using sad map opposites and balance. All right, now the nice thing about consecutive integers is if you know the first one, all you have to do to get to the next one is add one. And then to get to the one after that, take the first one and add two, and so on. So what we're going to do is we're going to start by defining our variable. And I like to use n because it stands for a number. Okay, so let, let's let n equal the first number. All right, now if that's the case, now let's make our equation. The sum of three consecutive integers is 96. So that means I get to take n. I'm going to add the one that comes right after that. That would just be n plus 1. Notice I'm using parentheses to kind of identify, okay, here's the first number. Here's the second number. And the number that comes after that would be one more, so we'll say n plus 2. All right, so that gives me three numbers that will be in order, and the sum of those is 96. Now, all of these consecutive integer problems basically look exactly like this. Okay? All right, well, now let's solve it. Well, if I drop the parentheses, which I can do by associative property, let's count the actual n's I have. And you can see that I have three n's. Now let's we'll combine all those like terms. Okay. Now let's also combine the numbers. We have a plus 1 and a plus 2. That's going to be plus 3. And that's going to equal, go back to blue here, 96. Well, now I just solve it. It's a two-step two equation at this point. I've already simplified it by combining my like terms. So let's get rid of the plus 3 by subtracting 3 on both sides. And I get 3n is equal to 93. Or, yep, that's right, 93. And then I get rid of a times 3 by dividing by 3. And I get n equals 31. All right, now if that's the first number, the next two numbers would be 32 and 33. And sure enough, if I check it, 31 plus 32 plus 33 does equal 96. So those are the two kinds of problems that you're going to see uh, in today's classwork. Um, the first one's where you have to do a little bit of simplifying, okay? Um, and then this second equation, uh, where you're going to have to first set up the equation, okay? Now, sometimes, sometime later on, we'll talk about um, different consecutive uh, number problems, where instead of consecutive integers, you might have something like consecutive odds or consecutive evens. Uh, and the only difference there is if you're on an even number, you skip by 2, 4, 6, and so on. Same thing with odds. Okay, so there is another type of problem that's a little more complicated that we'll see later on, but you don't need to worry about that tonight. Um, so <clears throat> the name of the game today, uh, in terms of our multi-step equations, the only simplification step we're going to use today um, is that of combining like terms. We can also combine like terms. Um, we can also do simplification steps that involve maybe having to do a distributive property beforehand, then combining like terms. You'll see those in a little bit later in this chapter. Uh, and then also those ones that I alluded to at the beginning, where you have variables on both sides. Okay? All of those just involve a little bit of simplifying that we do beforehand, and then they're all going to be equations, basically just like this one right here, where we're going to have two-step equations. Okay? So that's the name of the game for this chapter. Um, thanks for watching, and uh, sorry I couldn't get this video uh, up to you last night. 
Um, but go ahead right now and work hard on getting your classwork done, 2 to 26 evens. If you get that done, um, there are very good problems if you want to go ahead uh, and do the test prep. And actually, the mixed review are pretty good problems, too, good practice problems. Um, so if you get done early, uh, spend a little time on that. All right, we just hit the 10-minute mark, so let's wrap this up. Um, thanks for watching, and uh, I hope to see you back in class tomorrow. Okay, bye, guys.